Hello, I'm Diane Schumacher. Welcome to Dragon's Lair Update. This month, Maryland Juco Conference play gets underway. Coach Dull's Dragons look to climb back into the playoff picture, and HCC Women's Basketball battles Hagerstown. Mary Lee Adams closes the show with an all-new Dragon close-up. Men's basketball leads off. Howard goes up against Hagerstown. Gary Digital Williams anchors our coverage. Thanks, Diane. The Dragons enter the game with a 3-11 record. They're in the midst of a six-game losing streak. Defensive issues have plagued the Dragons. Howard has allowed opponents to score 86 points per game during the losing streak. Basketball analyst Chuck Nagel will be with us for this Maryland Juco contest. So, Chuck, what's it going to take for Howard to pull off this upset? Gary, Howard comes into this game with only three wins, and as you know, we're getting close to the end of the regular season now, so I think to win number four, they'll have to clean up a lot of the mistakes we've seen them uh, perform so far. They haven't done well, they've got to do better. Certainly, we'll need to see a much more aggressive defense. Whether they play man-to-man -man or zone, they must do a better job covering the ball. The Dragons, on the other hand, give up far too many open shots, especially from the three-point circle. They must approach the shooter more aggressively, hands up. Certainly that should help. On offense, the Dragons must take better shots. They're only shooting 39% from the floor and just over 20% from the three-point arc. That's not going to win many games. I'd like to see them more conservative with their shot selection, and rather than settle for the three-pointer, look for scoring opportunities by driving to the basket where they can finish at the rim, which they've done very well on occasion, or pass the ball to the open man for the easy basket. Hagerstown enters the game with a 7-9 record, looking to avoid a third consecutive losing season. Now, this is after winning the Division I region title three years in a row from 2011 to 2013. Chuck, what do you expect to see from Hagerstown? Gary, the strength of Hagerstown, I think, is in their ability to beat you down the floor, flat out get down the floor for easy baskets before you can recover. They're a strong rebounding team, they get the ball off the glass and look to run very, very well. They can also score by creating turnovers, which lead to three on two and eventually the two on one fast break opportunity. They're a tough team to measure because they also play in spurts, much like many teams do. They can go two for nine from the floor and then all of a sudden hit their next 10 shots. I think if you can limit their number of uncontested shots and make them play from behind, which they don't do well, you've got a good chance to beat them. Howard in Hagerstown is next, so let's go to the Dragon's Lair. First half, Gabriel Mack taking it down for Hagerstown. The Dragons fall back in that zone defense, just giving up way too many open threes like this one. Some of the same stuff here, the Dragons just not moving very quickly on that zone. Here they give up another three-point shot, and all of a sudden they go from down four to down ten. Amir Atkins is two for three from range thus far. Hagerstown is on a 9-0 run. On the other end of the floor, Hagerstown seems to be giving, giving up those same kind of shots. It's become a game from behind the arc. 7.30 till halftime, the Dragons have outscored Hagerstown 11-7 over the last five minutes. Davis here taking the ball out of bounds, gets the ball back, drives baseline, and just not a good place to stop. Hence the errant pass, scoring opportunity, the two-on-one, and the foul on Howard. The Dragons here have come out and extended that Looks like a 1-1-3 half-court press, but again, no pressure, and they give up the open three. Hagerstown on a 9-0 run. Davis brings it down for Howard. Hagerstown now looks like they're in a man-to-man -man defense. What a great backdoor cut by Juwan Grant. He gets it a little late, unfortunately puts it up in heavy traffic, no foul called. The Hawks outscore Howard 24-11 in the last seven minutes of the half and take a commanding 47-33 halftime lead. Dragons now come out in the second half, changing to a man-to-man -man defense. Good pressure on the ball. Just can't screen out, though. Hagerstown with a great effort. Second effort, an easy two-point shot. Back and forth start to the second half. The Hawks extend their lead to 16. Three minutes into the half now. The lead is 15 for Hagerstown. Cal Davis working against the full-court press. Moves it to Grant, draws the contact, and makes the official blow his whistle. Juwan Grant opportunistic here with a chance to cut the deficit to 12. After made baskets, Hagerstown full court press. The Dragons here look like they do a nice job down the middle, sideline, Juwan Grant, perfect play, he does the rest. 
Looks like Howard now in sort of a zone defense, 1-2-2 two, two perhaps, but again, they just don't get out quick enough on the ball, and they give up another three-point shot. Atkins has 21 points. He's 6 for 7 from three-point range. 16 minutes to play, Dragons down 15. Unfortunately, Grant just doesn't see the pass coming. It sets up, look at that, a five on three, eventually a two on one easy fast break basket. Howard trying to get back in the ball game, down 16 with a full court press. But once again, they just don't get down the floor fast enough and they give up that three on two fast break. 9.36 remaining in the game. Howard is on a 7-2 run. Number two in white, Taquan Hall, like a defensive back here. Meeting the quarterback's eyes, he jumps the route and picks it off. The Hawks decide to follow. Howard outscoring Hagerstown 12-4 over the last three minutes. Jackson doesn't connect on the three. Rebound for Davis. He outruns two Hawks. Three on one now. Juwan Grant misses in transition, but battles for his own rebound, and we have a nine-point game. Hagerstown doesn't waste any time. Here we go on the other end. Immediate response from Gabriel Mack attacks the rim and regains some momentum for the Hawks. Howard now down 12. Pretty good man-to-man -man defense. Great ball pressure. Guarded well. Great help down the middle here. The best defensive sequence I think we've seen tonight results in a bad shot by Hagerstown. Defensive rebound and a foul on the play. 415 remaining, holding an 11-point advantage. Hagerstown milks the shot clock down to three. Davis breaks it up. Grant gets the ball for Howard, catches Hall on the run. Take one Hall, barrels down the floor, and draws the foul. Hall hit his free throws. Dragons made a stop on defense. Nine-point game with 345 on the clock. Ryan Jackson buries it for three. Howard's back in the game. Dragons here coming down the floor, approaching that 1-2-2 two, two Hagerstown defense. Great pass to Ash in the middle. He finds Jackson in the corner. It's a great pass and a great shot for three. Hagerstown missed two free throws after a Howard defensive foul. Ensuing Dragon possession, Gregory Ash Jr. Left hand attacks the basket, pro hop into the lane, gets to the line. Ash converted both free throws, a four point game. 2.41 to play, Mack takes it into the paint, out to Jackson. On target, Jackson lines up and delivers a big time three. Howard down four, Davis allows Mack to penetrate. Grant comes over to stop the shot. That leaves Grant's man wide open. Other end of the floor, Davis makes a play, takes him to the heart of the Hagerstown defense and draws the foul. Davis made them both. We're inside two minutes, five point lead for the Hawks. Atkins, shot clock down to eight, goes to Mack wide open and Mack makes him pay. Three pointers on each of the last two possessions for Hagerstown. Howard here, man to man defense. Of course, they have to be late in the game. Very good ball pressure. They make Atkins dribble left. Dragons double team, but here comes Mack out from behind the screen. He just drills the long three. The Dragons come back, falls short. 97 86 in your final. Let's send it down to Omed Hosseini. You'd say there were three minutes remaining in the second half, and there were two free throws sunk to bring the deficit down by four points. Tell us, uh, how fast was your adrenaline running? Because I was getting nervous by that point. Yeah, the, the adrenaline was definitely up. And I felt like like everybody on the team, like we had the up adrenaline. And we were just like playing more together. So that added the more, added more to the adrenaline. Everybody was hustling. Everybody was playing as a team together. And everybody was getting to the line, making free throws. And, and we were coming back after being down so much. In a rough first half, we had that adrenaline going. Yeah. And having said that, what, what did you take away from this game? Uh, we have a tend to uh, fall apart and like uh, panic sometimes. If we just stay together through most of the game, we would we probably could come out with some more wins and just like have a better game. Like it just feels we feel like we play a better game when everybody is just together and like on the same page and playing as a team. Great job and good luck on your next game. All right, thank you. For Dragons Let Update, I'm Omid Hosseini. My first guest was an assistant coach at Coppin State University for nine seasons. It's a pleasure to welcome head coach Jay Dahl. Thank you. Coming off the winter break, your roster has now changed. It's a, a smaller roster than when you first started. Does that help you or hurt you? Uh, it, it kills us, but it, it started even before that, you know, with, with all the issues that we had uh, coming in. And then it got compounded by me suspending a couple guys um, because they didn't want to come back at break time uh, 
from from break, missed a couple practices. I guess that's the adjustment high school kids need to understand with college level sports and specifically basketball. You have a very short break over Christmas holidays that you have to commit to practices. So these kids still don't understand to adapt to that at right. this level. Right. Well, you know, since it, 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 it's regardless of what level you're at at the college level, if you're going to go on and play at a four-year school, you know, most of the places where I've been, you, have, you don't get a break. Um, I think uh, last year was the first time I was home at Christmas for, for the last time I can remember. I mean, we were traveling all the time, and, and uh, all these guys have these aspirations to go on to a higher level, and they don't understand that uh, you can't just show up at those institutions and, and just fit right in. And uh, you, you come to a junior college, you get exposed to some of that stuff. I mean, we had eight days off, and to not be able to get everybody back here f for two practice games, and then, and, or two practice days between the two holidays, that, uh, that's extremely frustrating to me. You know, we had a lot of high aspirations going into this season, and right now, we're nowhere near where we can be, and we're nowhere near where I, where I think we should be. So, so where we are today, what individuals are you seeing improvement from? I'd like to start with Taquan Hall. Um, he's, he's a real quiet individual, um, almost to a detriment, but he, during the time that he's quiet, he's focused and paying attention. He, is, he has demonstrated to me, even though he's so quiet, it's hard to, under, you know, to determine whether he's focused, um, that he is focused because he knows what we're doing. And he's done everything that I've asked him to do. Um, and uh, he's just a, he's a joy, he, he's a joy to coach. Um, Ryan Jackson's another individual who's really, um, at first he didn't get it. He, he wondered why he wasn't playing. And then I think it clicked in his head that, well, coach keeps harping on effort. If I just play hard, you know, I'm not going to be perfect, but if I just play hard, I'll get some playing time. And sure enough, I mean, he practices very, very hard now. Where at the beginning of the year, he, he didn't. He kind of moped around because he wasn't in the starting lineup. Good luck, Coach. Thanks. It's time for women's basketball. Howard and Hagerstown face off in a game with Sirius Region 20 and Maryland Juco playoff implications. Gary Digital Williams anchors our coverage. Thanks, Diane. The Dragons enter the game with an 8-2 record under first-year head coach Maureen Shakru. Two players who were with the team prior to the winter break are no longer on the team. This leaves the Dragons with only six players. Basketball analyst Chuck Nagel is back for this D2 Region 20 showdown. Chuck, what have you seen from the Dragons? Gary, one thing we know about Howard, they're going to come out in a 2-3 zone defense and hope to play that zone defense for the full 40 minutes. I think the outcome of tonight's game will be determined by just how well Howard can play that 2-3 zone defense. They must tighten their zone, and they must move out quicker on the open shooter. They've given up far too many open shots. They must also rebound better, and they've got to hustle down the floor to try to stop Hagertown's fast break opportunities. On offense, Howard three, four, and five players, they need to work harder to get open shots, whether it's against a zone or man to man. And when those shots become available, they need to make them. And if not, the Dragons need to work hard, obviously on the offensive boards to get those put back shots. Hagerstown is 14 and two coming into this contest and the Hawks have won three straight in blowout fashion. Chuck, what are we going to see from Hagerstown? Hagerstown plays a 94-foot game, and by that I mean a very up-tempo style. They'll try to beat you down the floor and create easy scoring opportunities. They do this very well, either on the three-on-two or the two-on-one fast break. They also apply full-court and half-court pressure on defense, looking to create turnovers, which obviously lead to easy baskets. They're not great shooters from the floor, but they are quick, and they hit the offensive glass for second and third shots. This game will go a long way in determining postseason seeding. So let's go to the Dragons' lair. First half, four-point lead for Hagerstown. Jazz Sproul, Daisha Adams. She gets a cushion, makes him pay from long range. 
Hard to tell what type of defense Howard is in. Maybe a zone. A lot of confusion chasing the ball. Confusion leads to an open three-point shot. Hagas down on a 6-2 run. Simone Walker. Adams wide open. Too strong. Heisig with a great floor-length pass to Thompson as they beat the defense down the floor. It all starts with that pass off the rebound. Again, Howard in the zone. Very heads-up defense here by Heisig. He goes all the way for the layup. Very nice steal. Very heads-up play from Heisig. Hagers down against the zone defense. Once again, they catch the Dragons loafing down the floor. They give up the easy three-point shot before they can even set up that defense. Two minutes remaining in the half. Lauren Thompson, her shot is off. Rebound for West. Dragons is taking way too much time getting down the floor to set up that defense. Again, giving up three on twos and two on one easy baskets. Second half, the Dragons turned it over twice in the first two minutes and six point lead for Hagerstown. West, one dribble, pulls up, gives the Hawks the biggest lead since the first quarter. Other end of the floor, Hagerstown's defense seems energized. Thompson barely able to haul in the pass, looking for Parks, another Dragon turnover. Hagerstown once again beating Howard down the floor, four on two. Heisig pressures the ball, looking for a travel there. West keeps playing and drains the short jumper. Next Howard possession, Coglin driving. West jumps on the pass. Lana Long ahead to Spruill. Diving after it is Heisig. What a play to prevent another transition layup. They hit the deck, starting to look like a way-in stare down out there. And Heisig is hit with a technical foul. Hagerstown is on a 10-2 run. Ball goes from the baseline, wing to the middle, draws the defense away from the basket. Easy play for the post, easy shot for the post player. This, you'll see, is one of the few times we've seen the proper way to attack that 2-3 zone. Middle, high post, low post, easy shot. Certainly a concept both coaches would like to see. 2-13 remaining in the third quarter. Hagerstown has a 15-point lead. Spruill's three is off target. Ebony Anderson with the rebound. Finds Thompson. She catches Coglin in stride. Unable to finish, but Coglin scraps for own rebound. To Heisig, hard foul by Simone Small. Heisig lands awkwardly on her bad leg and has to go to the bench. That's a big blow to Howard's chances. Howard's on a 5-0 run. Dragons just made a stop on defense. Great hustle on the missed free throw by Thompson. Notice here she has a presence to step back on the court, get the return pass, and hit the jump shot. Other end of the floor, Spruill kicks it out to Adams, responds with a quick three. Hagerstown doing here what they do best. Find the open shooter, hit the three. Five minutes remaining in the game, Heisig is back on the floor for Howard. Heisig very active on that zone defense. Wow, what a great pass down the floor. Creates two on one, fast break basket. Nice job on defense. She's been tough all night long. Hagerstown's lead is down to seven. Thompson goes to Coglin to Anderson in the middle. Knocks it down. 13 point night for Ebony Anderson. Ensuing Hawks possession, Hagerstown moves to the west, burns down the baseline. Another immediate response from Hagerstown. We saw this earlier, whenever Howard starts to get going, Hagerstown kills the momentum right away. Hawks came up with a stop on defense, 2.15 remaining in the game. Tough screen by Lana Long. Spruill goes back to west, and she can't miss at the moment. West makes it a nine point game. Other end of the floor, Thompson inbounds to Parks, working against West. Parks attacks the rim, cuts it to a seven-point deficit with 1.55 to go. Next possession, West looks baseline again, cut off by Heisig. And she loses the ball. Here come the Dragons the other way. Spruill with the foul. Officials call a technical foul as well on Spruill. Huge break for Howard. But the Dragons made only two of their four free throws, leaving crucial points on the table late in the contest. Five-point game, 112 remaining. Walker up against Parks, hands it off to West. Heisig and Parks have a pin against the sideline. Jump ball is the call for possession arrow to Hagerstown, and we see West and Heisig need to be separated once again. Ensuing inbounds pass, give the ball to West and let her milk the shot clock seems to be the strategy. Heisig and Parks go after her again. Adams now, shot clock at 11. Goes behind the screen, right into the sideline. Heisig is there defensively. Howard forces a turnover with 57 seconds to go. 
five point game, crucial possession. We're inside 50 seconds. Thompson to Thomas from behind the arc. No. Parks with the rebound to Coglin. Stripped in the lane by Julia Gunthrop. What a play. Time would run out on the Dragons' comeback effort. 75 66, Hagerstown is your final. Let's send it down to Omed Hosseini. Sam, uh, you had a pretty bad fall in the second half there. How did you feel? Um, it hurt, obviously. Um, it was a little scary. Um, I knew going into the game that I already kind of tweaked it a little bit. So um, mentally, it was behind, you know, I was thinking about it behind every play, but I couldn't let that affect my game. And second half, it did, I think. I mean, I was definitely playing more reserved and um, took me mentally out of the game. Speaking of mentally, Liz, my question to you is how did you endure the shortage of bench players? We know that we don't have a lot of players, but with that, we don't lack heart and we're always fighting for one another. But we do know that when we can take some time off the clock and get a little bit of a rest, so we know we got to play smart, but we're playing for each other, so we don't lack any heart. Now, what was your strategy uh, heading into the second half, especially after the level of consistencies that you showed in the second quarter, Sam? Um, definitely wanted to eliminate their second chances. They were beating us on the boards completely, pretty much throughout the game, um, and that's probably where we lost. Um, they also were shooting. We wanted to get out of their two shooters that we just couldn't seem to stop. Um, other than that, I mean, we try to take away their primary primary players and eliminate down low, but we just couldn't seem to pinch the lead. Well, a magnificent effort, and good luck on your next game. For Dragons Let Update, I'm Omid Hosseini. My next guest came to Howard Community College from Atholton High School. She led the Raiders to a state championship in 2007. This is her first season as Howard's head coach. Maureen Shakru joins me now. Welcome, Coach. Thank you. How are your players' development so far from the beginning of the season to where you see them now? I, I think they have all improved, and I think they have all worked hard to become a team in the sense that I think that they, they expect things from each other and they know that they can do what we have to do to stay close and to possibly win. With your psychology background, <laughs> how important is that as a coach when you're dealing with student athletes? I think it's important in the sense that you need to know when to reinforce them and when, like when to say positive and when to say negative in the sense that I really believe these girls need to hear the positive and to, to build off that positive and not shut them down. Um, it, it doesn't do any good for me to criticize them. I don't have, have, I don't have lots of players to throw back at them. They have to take care of each other. And I think they've done that. I think they've been very good reinforcing each other and working together. Okay, now we need to finish in the top eight. If we're going to go to the Maryland Juco Conference, and well, I kind of goal, checked on that, our and goal we're like is to fifth right now. Our goal is to finish in the top eight. I, you know, I know who we have to play, and I know, I know who's ahead of us, and I know, you know, we'll see. I mean, I, that's our goal, and I think that's a realistic goal. Good luck. Thanks. Let's go to Mary Lee Adams for this month's Dragon Close-Up. Being a twin is a rarity in itself, but being a 6'6 basketball playing twin is practically an anomaly. Jawan and John Grant are fraternal twins who are nearly inseparable. Their time here at HCC has not gone unnoticed, and they're attracting the attention of several Division I programs. Starting off their basketball careers at a four-year school, the Grant twins didn't feel that they were going down the right path. Making the transition to JUCO seemed like the best route to go, and trusting their instincts is what led them to HCC. My father's friend, who goes around and helps kids get into different schools, and he was helping us try and get into Drexel or LaSalle, but he said, you want to go to JUCO and be home, why not go to Howard? When I met Coach Dahl, and I really liked his personality and him as a coach and what he was offering me at the time, and so I just was like, what better home? I knew they were pretty good students. I knew they were pretty good basketball players because I've known, known them from when they were in high school. And we had a lot of competition trying to get them to come here. Um, and we got lucky and, and they came. Growing up and playing sports together their entire lives, John and Jawan have created a bond that goes well beyond the basketball court. They tend to know what the other is going to do before the other does it. And 
that uh, that can be a positive sometimes it can be a negative sometimes sometimes they get bickering back and forth you know like like siblings uh, tend to do uh, but for the most part it's been a it's been a pleasurable experience for us it's like a dynamic duo type of thing like I can tell what he's going to do before he even gets the ball in his hand that's why a lot of coaches would rather us come as a package to play together. I know when he's going to shoot and when he knows when I'm going to shoot and whether the ball is coming off of a certain way. I know his tendencies, he knows mine, so I can rebound off of that, I can pass off of that, anything. With such talent and strong connection, one may think that the Grant Twins would be competing for the same spot on the court. But Coach Jay Dahl has found a way to showcase each brother individually and tap into their unique skill sets. Some of the other places where they were at together, they competed for the same position, and I tried to keep that not an option and playing them at the same position because they're both very good players. They both bring a different thing to the table. One shoots the three pretty well, the other one shoots the three okay. One puts the ball on the floor better, the other one's a better mid-range jump shooter. Um, they both are, have worked into becoming pretty good uh, rebounders right now. I know we both can shoot. I can kind of shoot a little better than him, but he don't like that. Uh, he can drive. He has a good left hand. He finished with his left hand. He's definitely a great shooter. Mid-range, he stepped out to the three-point. He's a knockdown shooter. He's a prolific scorer. Having a strong presence at home has made a huge impact on the Grant twins, with someone who is not only a mentor, but a source of inspiration. My father like even when he told me he was gonna miss a game, he somehow came to the game. And that's who really got us to play basketball. Like if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be here, I wouldn't be put in a situation with him. That's my that's the person who really motivates me to go hard. My father, he's he's the one, he's my backbone. I love him for that. My father, he still drives it in my head to this day that I need to work on both hands and going to the left and finishing left hard and going to the right and finishing just as hard too. With this season being a very trying one for the Dragons, the Grant Twins have had to persevere and focus on growth and what comes next. Several Division I schools are showing interest, but will they continue on as the dynamic Grant duo or choose to go down a solo path? They're real close to committing to a school. I can't tell you the name of the school yet, but um, you know, it is a Division I school and uh, they are in a situation where it looks like they're going to both be able to go to the same place. That's my brother, that's my twin brother, so I might as well do what I know I can do to help him out, help everyone else out. And plus, I wouldn't rather go nowhere without him. Wherever the Grant twins end up, their bond seems to be unbreakable. And their time here at HCC has given them a newfound confidence that is sure to take them to the next level. For Dragon Slayer Update, I'm Mary Lee Adams. For the latest highlights, go to youtube.com slash HCC Dragon Sports. Thanks for watching, and remember, go Dragons!